We have to put this spinning wheel back together. And this tea is not very warm. Alright. So I'm Stephanie from Resil Dazzle Registry and Yarns, LLC. We have our Ashford Elizabeth II in front of us. And we don't have anything to spin. Now we have stuff to spin. The fiber that we have is from our February Spinners Surprise Box. It's a subscription yarn of the month club that's available at WrestleDazzleRabbitry.com. And it's a special blend for February, three ounces. So there's a darker royal blue, there's a light blue, a light gray, and then there's Angora. And it's all, all blended together. So we're going to spin this, try to spin this consistently as a single today. We spun, we divide this up into three ounces, blend it all, all the fibers together using hand carters. And then we spin it as consistently as we can. And we try to spin each ounce the same consistency. So we're really practicing trying to spin consistent yarn with this. But if it's not completely consistent, it's not the end of the world, so that's okay too. So usually when I sit down and spin, it's really like a like a chit chat. I did some plying earlier today, so our hands are a bit more warmed up than they were. When I started plying it, they felt a little they didn't feel so warmed up. I haven't oiled my wheel yet. And it's making a bit of noise. It needs a little bit of attention. So I'll have to get to that. Excellent. So spinning about an ounce of this fiber takes me about an hour for the first ounce. When you take fiber and you part it together, you blend it together, and there's uh, there's fiber that you spin thinner. I find that it takes longer to spin fiber thin than if you were to take that same fiber and then spin it thicker, which does of course make sense because well you're stretching putting less fibers into the to the single when you spin it thick. And when you spin it thick, more of the fibers get spun up at once. And so you go through more fiber. So today is it started out kind of cloudy outside, and um, there's just a lot to think about in life, a lot going on. Mornings are a time when it's um, my brain feels the freshest. It feels like it can handle um, complex 
things better. It's just more clear. So the first ounce that I spun up of this, it had, I didn't like as the amount of twist that was in it. And so I want to be able to see when I'm spinning this, I want to actively put less twist in this, this single because I'm going to go back and I'm going to apply this single on itself. So what I'll do after I'm finished spinning this is I'll turn it into a center pole ball using a ball winder. And then it will be applied back on it. The single will be applied back on itself. So this is the method that you only need one bobbin, you don't need two bobbins. We'll go back and we'll make a two-ply single. I found when I started spinning out on the Ashford Kiwi, I had an Ashford Kiwi, the original, his name was Bob, and when I was spinning on Bob, he would, uh, it would, it seemed like because of the setup of the wheel, it was just easier to manage my twist. Well, with the Ashford Elizabeth, this is a wheel that's designed to spin a thin, more fine, traditional yarn. And so I found that using this wheel, really upped the level of skill. It required a different level of skill, a higher level of skill, than if I were to just spin on the regular setup of my Ashford Kiwi. And I don't have the Kiwi anymore. I switched to just the Ashford Elizabeth II right now, which I've had now for, I think, over two years at least, and I really enjoy the yarn that does come from the Ashford Elizabeth too. When I had first started researching wheels, because I knew I wanted to spin Angora, high content Angora yarn, and I really wanted a machine that was for, that was designed for spinning um, a lot of yarn, a lot of traditional yarns. I wasn't I, didn't, I did not want a machine that was going to spin the art yarns because I was, even though I could spin art yarns, I had a machine that could spin art yarns and I wasn't interested in a, a tool. I wanted a tool for that. I wanted a tool that specialized uh, in the finer, more fine, traditional yarns. So there's a lot of different options out there. There's a lot of different spinning wheels out there. and. The Elizabeth II that I spit on, the Ashford Elizabeth II, is it can be a double drive. I set up as a single right now. It can be set up as a double treadle. Mine's set up as a single treadle right now. The, the wheel also has different uh, attachments that you could put on. So if, if you wanted an even higher ratio, can change and you can get you know, additional modifications for your wheel. So the Ashford Elizabeth II is a bulkier wheel. This isn't, this is not a wheel that is easy to travel with. So if you're thinking about wheels and you know, you're thinking about, should I get an Ashford Elizabeth II? You have to ask yourself, you know, what sort of yarn are you hoping to make? And if you're, if you're looking to spin fibers such as Angora or high content Angora, make high content Angora yarns, traditional yarns, the Ashford Elizabeth II is on the right track. But if you're looking for a wheel with, if you have to have portability, and if you're looking for a really 
easy to travel with, lightweight wheel. Those are some of the areas. This is not a wheel that was made to travel all over with. This was, this is definitely a, a wheel that enjoys being in one place. The Ashford Kiwi was much easier to travel with. It was a, I had a double trail, single drive. It was a wonderful, wonderful wheel. However, I moved more and more towards spinning traditional yarns and stopped doing as many uh, shows, traveling as much. And so a wheel like this, like the Ashford Elizabeth II, was much more, it, it fit better into my life that way. Uh, your Ashford Elizabeth II shouldn't be making this much of a ticking noise. This one needs a little bit of care. It was a very busy, November, December, and January, a lot of spinning and knitting and crocheting and carding. Very busy season this year. Uh, at one point I was spinning just with the, the little the oil bottle right, right next to the wheel. So if you're looking for and thinking about spinning wheels and if you're thinking about spinning consistent yarn, if you go to razzledazzlerabbitry.com, there is a free checklist. It's 39 ways to spin more consistent yarn. And there's a whole variety of things on that checklist and it's completely free. There's a few other uh, free things on that website too. If you go to the, click the section that says shop, you can find a free hat pattern, for example, a knit hat pattern. Find a couple different resources for Angora rabbits that are free. But if that's something you're looking at, spinning more consistent yarn, there are some resources available. So we're moving the yarn onto a different hook. We're on hook number three. And this, when we get to the hook, adjusts where it goes on the bobbin. So that's how you adjust on this particular. Setup. All right, let's look here. I have the tiniest bit of fluff that I'm going to spin next. Still have to pay attention to the amount of twist that's going in. We don't want to overspin our yarn at all. I have to adjust my tension seam here. This is it's not drafting as smoothly as I would like. It's slow. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna adjust my attention and that's gonna increase the amount of pull onto the bobbin and of the single through the orifice. And that as long as my left hand here doesn't keep pinching, that'll keep my keep my fiber getting as much twist as I would prefer. And when you work with and you spin yarn, you can still use yarn that has a lot of twist in it. That's, that's certainly okay. Um, something that happens is when you wash the yarn it, and you actually, um, you have the yarn washed, setting the twist, drying it, you can balance out a little bit of that twist if you have too much. Plying, depending on how you ply it, is another method to correct if you have over twisting. Let the cat out. 
slowing down the treadling, the speed of treadling, will also help when you're trying to spin and trying to spin consistent yarn. You don't have to try and go very fast. So we started out here with about seven of these row legs. I have one in my hand and there's still four left on the ground to spin. Again, it took me about an hour to spin the first ounce of this that I had carded up. a wintry, wintry blend of fiber. It reminds me kind of ice and snow, just like a winter, winter sky. When you're spinning, one of the things you might not want to do is this. Ready? Putting the yarn really close to the orifice, so spinning and putting it in, spinning, putting it in. That can add, like, it can make the twist concentrated into that section of yarn. Not always. Depends on what you're spinning, how you're spinning, how much twist. But that is a possibility, and I try to avoid that. Sometimes it's nice to spin when there's not a lot of pressure to spin it fast. I think there's benefits to try to increase your speed if you're someone who's looking to produce yarn and you're looking for production spinning. I think there's benefits to trying to spin fast. And purposefully taking fiber and really trying to see how fast you can spin it while still making a consistent good yarn. Um, that's a fun exercise sometimes, but also it's also it's fun to just take a relaxing pace and spin slowly. Or at a you know, nice consistent pace like this. Sometimes in my videos, there's a lot to say. I have a lot to say. Sometimes in my videos, it's just time to spin. Today's video, just, just time to spin. Just time to relax. It's a Tuesday. No need to rush.
This fiber is very beautiful, the dark blue. It's not just blue. There's a whole variety, whole depth of color. Just like the light blue, it's not just one type of light blue. And the Angora, it's not just one color Angora. So this, all this fiber is very beautiful to work with. And I'm very excited to, I think it'll be, uh, it'll create something wonderful to knit great to knit with. Sometimes when I look at it, it looks like it wants to be a hat. And other times I look at it, it looks like it might want to be socks. But either way, definitely looks like a bit of winter. watching my pace of trailing, the pace of drafting, how it's drafting, my twist. One of the things I don't want is I don't want this yarn to have sections that are really, really tightly twisted and sections that are really, really loosely twisted. I want my twist to be consistent throughout the yarn. And I want the amount of fiber to be consistent that I'm drafting as well. So this is just an exercise of consciously and mindfully paying attention those things while I'm spinning. I'm slowing it down and, and letting my hands and my feet really just practice paying attention and, and very consistently doing those things. And that'll help get a consistent result in the end. It's almost time to switch to a different hook here. And we're at the end of this rolling. We'll switch it up. Should have switched a little bit earlier. It looks like it's going to be time to get going. Sometimes that happens. I don't like stopping in the middle of a spinning project, but it looks like uh, we've got to pick someone up for preschool. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you had fun and a nice relaxing spinning video with me. We'll see you in our next video. Bye.